Here today, gone tomorrow. Sabrina calling herself a teenage witch is always forced. She says that because of that, she knows Harvey's about to step in through that door and ask her out. This would be a bit less confusing if we saw her cast a spell for that. Weatherby abuses his authority as a principal by telling Harvey to write a thousand-word essay on why long hair is a menace to society. Harvey doesn't have long hair. It doesn't go past his ears. Sabrina wants to change Weatherby's mind about long hair. Hilda butts in in her life and tells her not to do that, and Zelda says it's just a phase she's going through. It's times like this that I wish they didn't exist. I really find them intrusive and horrible when they're like this. Sabrina's told to undo her spell, and then she realizes that she can get someone else to help him. She casts a spell to make Ambrose drive towards her. He gets sent here from Paris. She tells him that's Weatherby, and he immediately knows that she wants him to help him. He reads his mind to find out that the office of the school board commission didn't let him become an assistant professor at a college because the job calls for a younger man. So he's convinced that it's because of his baldness. Based on his tone, Ambrose finds this funny. So good thing he's fine with helping, apparently. Weatherby suddenly realizes he has hair tonic and says he doesn't remember wasting money on this worthless junk and calls the hair tonic he does have worthless as well, making me wonder why he thinks this is worthless. He's brainwashed into pouring it on his scalp and getting hair right away. Ambrose is fine with helping Sabrina, so I really wish her aunts didn't force her not to use magic for good. All they did was waste my time in anger, man. The show would work just as well if only Ambrose raised Sabrina. After all, the 90s comic doesn't lose anything by not having her aunts forbid her from using magic for good. Harvey's let out of detention by Weatherby, but then Harvey's hair goes in front of his eyes, and somehow even the picture of Abraham Lincoln's beard grows hair when the hair wasn't real, and hair appears in his bowling ball and he faints. I'm just forced to assume that Ambrose did this on purpose. Why? Grundy gets a beard and faints, a nice punishment for scolding Sabrina for thinking she can fool her. Ambrose should have known this would happen after all of his experience as a warlock, if this is the only possible result of Weatherby using that hair tonic. Archie gets a beard, and Veronica thinks it's a fake beard, and says that this is his way of saying that she kept him waiting. And because she's immature, she tells him not to speak to her again, instead of simply apologizing to him and learning her lesson. Why would Ambrose make the hair tonic like this, instead of just doing what Sabrina clearly wanted? It's not even like Weatherby used too much and he didn't follow the instructions, and everyone just assumed he would follow the instructions right. The barber accidentally shaves Weatherby's hair, and he's casual about snapping his fingers and creating more hair. I guess the hair tonic told his brain that he could do that, and made him not freak out about it. The barber faints. People faint way too easily. And Sabrina gets Riverdale clean-shaven again, a funny thing of her to say. She magically gets rid of the hair potion, and says an overly long spell and returns Weatherby to normal, just as he was about to show his boss his hair. He faints when the guy conveniently shows him a handheld mirror. Sabrina says she's through with trying to solve other people's problems, and says may the spirits punish her if she doesn't mean it. So Salem runs away after she's that stupid. I know witches aren't allowed to do good with magic, so Ambrose must have felt forced into giving her a bad potion, but it's so irritating. It's not explained that he had the new hair of Weatherby make hair show up everywhere on purpose, but that has to be it. You'd think Sabrina would simply magically give him new hair with hair tonic and that would be it. But no, this has to be written to explain why it won't always be like this. Then the plot shouldn't have been written then because it doesn't work. We always assumed the reason Weatherby stayed bald and didn't even buy a wig was that he was okay with it. And maybe I just don't remember him well after decades of not reading the comics, but it seemed out of character for him to force Harvey to write a huge essay on why long hair sucks, just because he's jealous of him having hair, when his hair isn't even long anyways. And that was the whole reason the story happened. Couldn't Sabrina have made it a bad deed by giving him hair and brainwashing him to not being happy with it? A witch in time. Somehow, Sabrina can't keep the sofa levitating, and it falls into Zelda's vacuum. 
Zelda says her vacuum will never work again, even though she'd obviously just magically repair it right away. Hilda forces her to stay here and practice her levitation. So she has to levitate some plates. She wouldn't tell her to levitate plates that can break really easily. Harvey calls her and says they have a date to go to Surf City. I don't buy that Sabrina would suck at any particular spell. She can brainwash people in reverse time. Hilda abusively tells her that she's going to bed without dinner. It should at least be explained that Sabrina can just zap up dinner, and she knows that, but then she wouldn't say that. Zelda goes to Sabrina to secretly give her food, and Hilda shows up, and Della also had a feeling Zelda would weaken. I hate the existence of Della and Hilda in scenes like this. This is supposed to be a comedy? It was called the Sabrina Comedy Hour. Della says that they're too human for the job, and magically summons a horrible new guardian for Sabrina, Nagatha. Why didn't she do this a long time ago when she's this evil? If Della's so nonsensically evil, why doesn't she just brainwash all of the witches into being that evil? instead of somehow trusting Nagatha and teaching Sabrina to change her nature. You can't take me away from Aunt Hilda and Zelda! I love them! I hate Nagatha's voice. She flies away with Sabrina, and Della tells Zelda that she can only get Sabrina back if she commits one heartless deed. It's convenient that there's any way she can get Sabrina back, when Della's that evil. I suppose the reason they won't just warp Sabrina back to them is that Della would know about it. Hilda yells at Zelda, and fortunately, she cries too. Sabrina cries about never being able to see her aunts again, who she said she loved earlier. And Salem warps to her jail cell. I have to assume that her knowing that Della wouldn't let her is the only reason she's not just easily using her witch powers to get out of the situation. This is horrible. She turns Salem into a duplicate of hers, and tells him to not say a word if Nagatha shows up. Zelda pops a kid's balloon, and when he cries, she cries on the park bench, and Sabrina reunites with her without her seeing her. Sabrina uses magic to make Zelda's wand float away. Since when does she have a wand? Witches never need wands. Sabrina makes the wand make Weatherby's teeth fly away, and write a love message for Grundy, who says this means they're engaged and runs after him, which is forced. She just give up right away. And also, she'd immediately know this was magical. Because arbitrarily, Salem meowed at Nagatha when he was told not to speak, Nagatha is forced by the bad writing to go over to Zelda and order her to hand over Sabrina, rather than simply warping Sabrina to her. I wish they could just kill off Nagatha, just have her disappear. Zelda asks if she did that when a statue falls over, and Della finds it hard to believe that she's capable of such meanness. If she's eavesdropping on everyone so that she knows exactly when to show up, why doesn't she know Sabrina did this? She sees Weatherby acting like a baby and says that because Zelda took candy from a baby, she knows that she raised Sabrina properly. Taking candy from a baby? Congratulations! Now I'm convinced you'll raise Sabrina properly! <laughs> so I can tell that this is trying to be funny, but that line is the only time it's even remotely funny. Then the three witches have a cake, and Zelda tells Sabrina to go to bed without her supper because she threw cake at her for some reason. How in the hell does Della expect any witch to raise a witch to be evil, when obviously they don't want to punish people for inconveniencing them every time? So she got punished for acting like an evil witch. Sabrina thinks that she made Zelda into a monster because she made her think she's mean, and somehow she didn't figure out it was Sabrina enchanting the wand to do that and blamed herself, even though she would know that she didn't imagine any of that stuff to happen. For once, the episode unfortunately has a downer ending, where Hilda tries to sneak dinner to Sabrina instead of Zelda. I guess the reason Sabrina doesn't zap dinner to herself is that she's used to her aunts knowing stuff they shouldn't, so she thinks they'll just take the dinner away. But at that point, I wish she just turned them into statues so she could eat all of her dinner. But if she did that, she'd be punished for being a bad witch like they want just because she's subverting their authority. This is so stupid. If Sabrina was as bad a witch as possible, she'd be punished for killing Nagatha right away and killing Della, turning her into a statue. So they want them to be bad, but not too bad. I really hated this episode. 
Nagatha's voice is annoying, and any time Delos shows up, enforces the whole which is somehow have to be raised to be bad thing. It ruins the mood when it's supposed to be a funny show, not a sad show where Sabrina the Omnipotent Witch is somehow powerless. I just wanted her to turn Nagatha and Del into a statue. I'm sure other witches would undo a spell on them that would brainwash them to be good, so why bother? But she doesn't even explain that she knows she wants to be allowed to get away with it. It was also blatantly abusive that Hilda sent her to bed without dinner. Why didn't Della summon Nagatha years ago? Why didn't she know what Sabrina making Zelda's wand do evil things hiding in the bushes if she knows things she shouldn't, and that's why she warps to them, being a force-obnoxious villain as a result?